In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, calling down the Holy Spirit upon us in this Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Gal Galileans? Then how does each one of them, us hear them in his own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Oh 
if you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works, pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one through its many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. As we begin, I want you to follow along with me for just a moment. Uh, please indulge me. Close your eyes. Keep them closed. Daniel Washer, that means you can't go to sleep, though. But keep your eyes closed. Take a moment to acknowledge God's presence here in this church and in your life. Thank him for it. I want you to think about this week. How has this week been for you? Was it a good week? Was it a rough week? Now think, take a moment and think about today. How has the day been? Did you get to enjoy the sun? Now I want you to remember what you were thinking and feeling and expecting before you came to Mass this evening. I want you to tell that to God. In your mind and in your heart, to relate to him all the things that were, that were going on when you came through the doors of this church. It doesn't matter how difficult or how rude, how kind or loving it is. Tell it to him. I want you to invite Jesus into those thoughts, those feelings, and those emotions. Invite Him in. And if you're ready, open your eyes. The beautiful sequence that uh, Miss Gina did a beautiful job singing before the gospel this evening is entitled, Vene Sancti Spiritu. Come, Holy Spirit, come. It reminds us of that beautiful prayer within the life of every Christian. A hymn of praise of the Holy Spirit. Acknowledging what the Holy Spirit does. Meant to inspire us by pleading for the Holy Spirit to come. And now we need this more than ever within our lives. I don't know if you caught it, but one of the verses says, and calls the Holy Spirit, you, the soul's most welcome guest. The sequence also says, it cries out, Come, source of all our store, sweet refreshment here below. A powerful prayer, asking the Holy Spirit within our lives, inviting Him to remain with us, to give us new life. And I want us to sit with that this evening. The Holy Spirit that gives new life, 
a phrase that is hard to imagine, when for weeks we have been plagued by a pandemic, locked in and experiencing all sorts of thoughts and emotions. A time when we witness on the news, through friends and families, injustices committed in outrage, people reacting with chaos. A good evening to beg God for new life. And yet we know not what that new life looks like exactly. And a homily won't give the answer to that. It won't answer all of life's great questions. It only gives us a little bit of an insight into the life of God. And so that's what I'll try to do. Because the gospel today is an interesting tapestry that reveals something beautiful for each and every one of us. When we read through and we look at the gospel, we see that there are three distinct threads that go throughout it. They're different shades. They're a little bit different. But they intertwine and it's hard to pick them out from one another. But if we read through it, we see three different things intersecting to reveal something beautiful to us. And that first thread is the reality of Jesus' life. In order to understand this gospel, we have to recognize everything about Jesus Christ from his incarnation through his childhood into his adulthood and his three and a half years of ministry with the apostles tells us what the author is trying to say. In a short passage, we have to have the entirety of Christ's life before us. His death, burial, and his resurrection. The teaching, the healing that he did. And the apostles, they gathered in fear. Fear for their own lives, but a fear very similar to our own. And they did the only thing they knew what to do. To come together. To try to make sense of it. To talk about what had just happened over the last couple of years when they followed Jesus. What they witnessed. What he taught. To recall who Christ was. And the second thread is the cultural context of that time. The author of John wrote in a very particular time period. The communities that they were part of were filled with a lot of tension. Not just from religious leaders, but the civil leaders as well. Violence, poverty, oppression, were all part of their experience. And in this short text, we see Christ coming into their lives in this very intense moment. He barges in as they gather together. And the third thread of this tapestry is what Christ does while he is with them in that room. He burst in. He shares his peace with them. Wishing for them to receive his peace. And then he shows his wounds. To prove that he was not a ghost. But he also reveals to them that he is wounded. But also he is glorified and alive. And did you notice in the gospel something else that he did? Something a bit strange. And if we read it and listen to it only from our context, it's a little different. Christ breathes on them. Something that we might consider strange. But if we turn in our Bibles 
to the very first book in Genesis, we see in chapter 2, verse 7, the following. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. John wants us to read this entire text here thinking of Genesis. Because he wants us to know what God does. He breathes new life. He wants people to recognize that Jesus is God. He is divine. And that through His breath, He gives new life. A new life that is given to us through our baptism. The life of the Holy Spirit. A new creation. And the funny thing is that like, much like the disciples, we often forget about what that means. Because Christ shows His wounds to show His woundedness. But most importantly, to remind the apostles that there is life beyond being wounded. That the wounds may remain, but there is life. And a life better than we ever expected. He gives them peace in being united to God. And He brings new life into the lives of the apostles. And I offer that little exercise at the beginning of Mass as a means of recognizing what's going on within our life. With attention in our society, we have to ask Christ to pour out new life into us. And this is nothing new for an apostolic age. For years we have thought we live in a Christian society, but if anything has taught us over the last several weeks, we are far from such an ideal. The anxiety and fear of the apostles is a fear similar to our own. We live in a new apostolic age. An age where we're called to be disciples and to follow Him. An age that often displays fear and violence from those that oppose us. While charity and dialogue are far from the public sphere. We live in an age where information is shared instantly and people are connected virtually. But personally, everyone feels disconnected from one another. And it's within the context of this age that the world does not know that there is peace available for them. And it's difficult for us to see that peace as well. But that is the peace that Christ seeks to pour out into our lives. And as we gather here this evening, it's a good time to ask ourselves, where do we need the Holy Spirit within our lives? Where do we need new life? It's a, is it in our relationships, our work? our family, our friends? Do we new, need new life as we grieve and are in pain? Do we need new life to rid ourselves of the sins we return to month after month? Do we need new life to encounter Christ's joy here in this place? And this evening and this week is a wonderful time for us to invite the Holy Spirit in and to say that simple prayer, come Holy Spirit, come. Fill us with your life. Together, let us profess our faith. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the goodness of our God, we bring these prayers before him. For all who have been signed and sealed with the Holy Spirit, that this church may be united as one body made of many parts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people, may an outpouring of the Holy Spirit bring renewal and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost their way, May they find companions to walk alongside them with empathy and love, leading them to the path of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, by living lives rooted in the Lord, may the fruits of the Holy Spirit flourish in our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortion, for the names listed in the Book of Intentions, for those held silently in our hearts, and for the seminarians of the Diocese of Owensboro, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the departed, especially William Brown, Joe Manningly, and Dave Holloman, that they may be made perfect in the life-giving spirit. And for Richard and Rita Stiff, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to pour out your Spirit with upon, with on, within us and grant these petitions that they be according to your will. We ask this through the intercession of your Son, Christ our Lord. Souls. 
may the Spirit of God abide and bring us together in Christ. In our labor, rest must sweet, grateful coldness in the heat. Console Spirit of God abide and bring us together in Christ. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth and profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and William our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, you, o God his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we, we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation, be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your sins. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through, through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. peace. 
the Lamb of God, you take away, away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I 
of living water shall flow from within you. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that the spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith. And by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. St. Michael the, the Archangel, Archangel, defend, defend us, us in battle. battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>